Alright, so this is just a logic test. Here goes my logic supply. I'm feeding about 18 volt into a 15 volt one and a half amp regulator and that's powering the gate drivers. Basically the gate driver is running according to this interrupter frequency. Current draw at around 18 volts into the regulator. The only pull you're really going to see is uh, into the gate drivers. Got a little load here powered by this 50 volts. This is my gate drive. About 15 volts. And all my knobs are all the way down if I cut the DPS up, you know, increase my power about 100 watt. But I can try to emulate continuous wave as best I can by cutting the on time up really high like that with a high BPS. So it's pulling about 120, 130. That's about as much as that'll pull at uh, 50 volts. That is what the logic is pulling now. 15 volts. That regulator is putting out pretty close to an amp. It's not quite there. About that right there is what the gate drivers can handle. You can see I'm at about, uh, I don't know, 180 kilohertz, something like that. I'm going to bump that frequency up just a little bit. 200. You can see the logic consumption going up as I'm increasing the frequency. And there comes a point where I start to hear a voltage drop with that fan speed. That little tiny fan I've got on the gate drivers starts sagging down. Something about like that right there is where you're getting dangerous. And those gate drivers are going to start baking. From what I can tell, I can probably just barely get away with something like that up to about two, maybe 230 kilohertz. So something like that would be about the maximum I'd want to comfortably see and think I could get away with without really beefing up the drive stage. 180 kilohertz probably run fairly comfortably like that. Obviously this is just a resistive load that's not going to get hot or anything and it's just testing the logic draw here. If I was to see that start shooting up, I'm not going to get away with that. Gate drivers will probably chug along maybe a minute. Eventually one of them is just going to crack and, and uh, give up or both of them. Continuing on with this full bridge set up here running this coil now this is the coil I plan on running on it I managed to uh, get away with putting this little shield over where I can little tune it a little more reasonably the problem is I ran into a little snafu where I done goofed run this that coil is actually running at 260 kilohertz instead of 160 kilohertz like I had it originally thought. Obviously I could still run it interrupted. It's the logic supply. Cut it up quite a bit. See my lights start dimming when I cut this up. So obviously the field is strong. It's not looking like I get away with continuous waves. What I'm going to have to do now is try to use that coil back there. That's my dual resonant coil. And it's funny because after I've built that thing, I haven't run it really at all. It just sits there. I just know I can cut it on and run it at any time and get damn near three foot arcs from it. It's pretty awesome. But I never run it because it's so freaking loud. This is something I would run probably all the time and be pulling hot arcs from it and stuff like that. It sucks that that frequency is too high. Um, and I'm thinking that might be able to be brought low enough if I use that coil throw that top load on it Now you see I've got this coil on big guys taking a break basically have the same primary I'm just throwing that coil inside that primary. It's not tuned or anything. Just looking for output The good thing is yeah, I'm running about 200 kilohertz or so so still playing switch root. Here's yet another coil I had on a different half bridge. I've once again just put it inside the same primary. It actually runs pretty good. Got it set pretty good right now. So around that region it's about optimal. It's hard to say for sure just looking at it like that. But anyway, about 250, I'm thinking I can just put a big top load on it 
and then boom, run that one instead of stealing my dual resonant coil. I don't really want to burn that out or anything. Thing is, that's 36 gauge wire, so how that's going to be able to handle continuous wave arcs, so we'll have to see. So now you can see I've added this top load on it. That's the supply on the right. 30 volt supply. See, logic supply pulls pretty much nothing running it like this. But the good thing is, again, now we've dropped to 160, 165, 170 kilohertz or so. Just by adding that top load, it's dropped it a whole bunch. So that's when I'm gonna run continuous wave. I'm gonna find out if that secondary can handle it because that's about the, I don't know, I'm cool with sacrificing that 